Hello there YouTube, it's Webby3, back with another kicking action figure review. Today we have more McFarlane for ya, but it's not a McFarlane DC Multiverse figure, it's a McFarlane DC Direct figure. And it is the Batman Fighting the Frozen Page Punchers, Mr. Freeze. This is the first Page Punchers figure I'm reviewing, first one I've gotten. I've gotten figures with comics before, like Toy Biz Marvel Legends and stuff, but... This is my first of these McFarlane DC Direct Page Punchers. Not entirely sure why he's using the DC Direct name on these. I know that they like brought DC Direct into McFarlane when they stopped, you know, making figures and stuff. I don't know if that's something they legally have to do in order to make Page Punchers, like in order to make figures that come with a comic. Uh, I don't know if they're just using the DC Direct name because fans like know that name and associate stuff with it because this figure isn't, or at least it doesn't appear to be any old DC Direct sculpt or anything because I mean, when they first brought DC Direct back, they just re-released some DC Direct figures like this Deceased Unkillable's Red Hood, which I have reviewed. But this just appears to be a totally new and original figure, and it's very much in the McFarlane style, so I'm not entirely sure why this is a DC Direct. If you know the answer, let me know. I think it has something to do with the comic book, to be honest. This isn't Tommy Boy, you know? <laughs> I th think it, it's some kind of legal thing with the comic. Once again, don't know, but if you know, please tell me. Anyways, when they first announced this figure, I fell in love with this Mr. Freeze design. First, I want to talk about the comic, and then I'll get it out of the way. Uh, it's a really cool cover art. Batman Fighting the Frozen is a good title. Uh, I didn't really like the comic, though. I'm not going to lie. It's very simple. Uh, Mr. Freeze is trying to cure Nora. His experiment makes him go back in time. For some reason, I think it maybe would have been better as a period piece, or maybe it would have been better if, like, the Bat characters in it just didn't have tech and had to use, like, nature to make their, you know, own weapons and stuff. That being said, God, it's such a cool look for Mr. Freeze that I don't care. It's <laughs> this old-timey diver look. It's like if Mike Mignola was asked to redesign Mr. Freeze, I feel like this is what he'd make. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so cool. And honestly, I'd love to see Mignola draw this. I really would. What a cool look. But the book is basically Mr. Freeze goes back in time. He fights the Bat Clan. That's it. That's the whole thing. There's four issues. I think they are all different. This It ends with the beginning. So I feel like this is... I feel like each issue will just be a featured story about the character. That being said, I really like the style of it. The art is really cool. I like how Mr. Freeze's speech bubbles kind of look like little blue gears. It looks great on the inside. The story is just really boring and basic and admittedly kind of pointless, except for to showcase these designs. Really cool design, though. I think I'm just going to sell the book. Probably not on eBay. It's probably going in my physical store, which is usually where single issues go, unless they're expensive ones. So, yeah. This is going to go in my physical store, uh, which is called The Three Profiteers. It's in the shops of Monticello in Monticello, Georgia. Uh, I'm just going to throw it in there. Because I don't really want to keep it. <laughs> and it's like, oh, the figure will have a higher resale value if you keep the comic with it. Eh... I don't see myself really reselling this guy anytime soon. Plus, there might be a lot of people that want the figure and not the comic. I would have bought this comic or no. You know? Because it's just such a cool look. Dear Lord, it's a cool look. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, uh, let's get on to more of the stuff that came with him, like this trading card. I've said before that I like how McFarlane includes the trading cards. It's nostalgic for me because, uh, you know, Trend Masters and stuff kind of stupid though that the art on the front of the card is the same art as the front of the comic oh but they do they do comic cover art all the time and i know i've said in the past that i prefer comic cover art or character art over 
uh, product images. The product images I think are kind of lazy, and I don't need an image of the figure I just bought, you know? But, in the same vein, I don't need an image of the comic I just bought. Maybe, like, concept art I think would be better on this, because I don't really want an image from inside the book either. Because you're basically just giving me two of the same image. That's pointless. So, I feel like what should have been done here is concept art, or maybe just McFarlane or someone else, maybe Mike Magnola, I don't know, could do the art for the card. But I think concept art would be the best because that's something you would have anyway and you wouldn't have to pay an artist to make a new one. McFarlane wouldn't have to pay an artist to make a new one if he did it himself. I really like McFarlane's art. I'm just saying, don't give me two of the same pieces of art with the figure, all right? It's 25 bucks. <laughs> I think you can give me two different images, all right? I think that should be more than within your power. Mm-hmm. May of course get the regular DC stand which is fine, and good, even. It's not super needed for him, because his feet are so big and wide. He can stand on pretty much anything. This is really squishy, so not on this, but <laughs> any flat, hard surface he should be fine on. And then, of course, his big accessory is, you know, his big old freeze weapon here. It's a backpack that'll plug into his back. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Fella. So it plugs in here, and then he holds it extremely well. I've already messed around with him. Get in there, boy! Ooh! And it looks good. I actually kind of prefer it tilted a little like this. You know, I think it looks a bit more thrown together, you know what I mean? Because, like, when you look at this suit, you kind of think that he's, like, upcycled another suit. Like, this doesn't look like a suit made from scratch. It looks like it's upcycled. And, like, the pressure meters are now temperature meters and stuff I think is really cool. I guess he would also still need pressure meters. <laughs> but it's really nice. I like the silvery. I like how it's bendy. This is all one single color, but it is on his back. Woo! <laughs> but, I mean, he's got some blue painted on here. I like it a lot, you know? He's got the glowing red uh, Paul Dini Batman the Animated Series eyes. The, the glowing Bruce Tim eyes. <laughs> you know? And he does have uh, some decent articulation for a thick boy. Uh, his head looks up quite well side to side and stuff. It even wobbles a little, but he can't look down, like, at all. You're going to have to, like, push his other articulation forward to make him look down. You got up and down on the arm, forward and back. It doesn't have that kind of butterfly-ish kind of joint there that McFarlane figures often do, but he does have, you know, a bicep, well, elbow, not bicep, because he doesn't have articulation on the bicep, it's instead in the elbow, because he's, a lot of times thick figures will be like that. Can you tell I'm tired? <laughs> it's late, uh, but that's the only time I really have to film these days is late. So, you know, elbow articulation stuff too, wrist swivel and forward and back as well. I like that. He can crunch forward, which is, once again, something you'll have to do to make him look down, but you'll also have to work the legs. And he's got side to side. Oh, sorry about that. In and out, forward and back on the legs. He does have that rubber cover, so they can go back a little, but not m much, you know. Nothing on the thigh. The knee bends and also swivels. Boop. He's got forward and back on his little feeties. Ankle pivot and toe bean articulation. So it's definitely made like a DC multiverse figure. That's part of the confusion for me. Why does this figure use the DC Direct brand? A brand that failed, by the way. I'm not even sure why you would want to buy the DC Direct brand. <laughs> it's a brand that failed. <laughs> it had to rebrand multiple times and then it just failed. Probably because their figures were super fragile and they never ever fixed that. That's probably... <laughs> And then, you know, McFarlane started making better figures in the same scale. Whatever. Whatever. Anyways, he's got a lot of dials on him. I like to think the ones that don't have any red, like these, are pressure, and the ones that do have red are temperature. That makes sense to me. You know, he's got all this little, like, kind of fur sticking out. It's not ice. It's more like fur, like insulation. You know what I mean? 
God, he's cool. <laughs> I just love this design. And now I think it's time for size comparisons. Here's Mr. Freeze with some other Batman villains. These are from the DC Multiverse line, which is basically what he is. He basically is a DC Multiverse figure. Even if the packaging says DC Direct, that's really how he's made. So here on the left, we have Two-Face as Batman, which utilizes the Hush Batman mold. And then, did I say right? I meant left. I'm very tired. Did I say right? On the right, we have Hush. We have Hush on the right. <laughs> So this looks pretty good to me. Yeah, he's taller and bulkier, but that makes sense because of how Mr. Freeze's outfit is. You know, I think it looks good. It makes me happy. I love the look of this Mr. Freeze. Seriously, I do. And he scales well with these figures. Now, how about some Superman figures? No particular reason. They're just ones that I already had in my review space because I've been reviewing a lot of Superman figures. Here on the left, we have the McFarlane DC Multiverse Collector's Edition, Superman from Action Comics number one. And on the right, we have the Rebirth General Zod, uh, which I believe was my last review. Hard to remember because I'm very tired. Plus, I recorded it a couple hours ago. <laughs> but yeah, I think he looks pretty good with them too. Now on to DC figures that aren't from McFarlane's Multiverse line. Here on the left, we have another DC Direct, one that's actually a DC Direct. I did show him off a second ago. It is the Deceased Unkillables Zombie Red Hood. And I think he scales perfectly fine with this Mr. Freeze. And you know, in the Deceased world, Mr. Freeze probably would have to upcycle old tech like this. Uh, you know, just because resources would be more scarce. So that is pretty cool. And then on the right, we have a Mattel. Uh, this one is the only one in size comparisons that I have not reviewed yet. I've reviewed the others I showed, but this General Zod from the Mattel Movie Masters Men of Steel line I have not reviewed, and he is just far too small for Mr. Freeze here. Even with Mr. Freeze's extra bulk, it's just not going to work. He's too small even for Mattel's comic series, which they, of course, don't make anymore. Now, that's McFarlane's job, and they do a better job than Mattel did. Sorry, Mattel. Speaking of Mattel... Here he is with their New 52 Doomsday Build-A-Figure from their DC Multiverse line. Or was it called Unlimited at that time? Who can remember they changed the name so many times? But yeah, that's one of their comic book figures, and I think it's fine. Yeah, Doomsday's a big guy. Works for me. Uh, Mr. Freeze is a larger scale, but once again, Doomsday's a big guy, and Mr. Freeze is really bulky. I think it can work but I don't think he'll work with most of them. That's just the one I have on hand here. And then, of course, here on the right, I have to show him with the deluxe spawn with Throne. I like to show this spawn with just all of McFarlane's figures, because Spawn's his guy, you know? Plus, he has crossed over with Batman in the past, multiple times, recently even, and I will be reviewing those in my comic review series on this channel. But yeah... I've reviewed all these figures in size comparisons except for the General Zod, so you can check those out and then subscribe if you want to see the Zod review, even though it's about 10 years too late for it. So all in all, what are my final thoughts on the McFarlane Page Punchers, Batman fighting the Frozen DC Direct Mr. Freeze? He's pretty cool. Pun intended. I really like this guy. He's a fully original sculpt, that seems, and just a magnificently cool and unique look for Mr. Freeze. He holds his accessory incredibly well. The comic was not very good. It was super basic. Nothing about it was really super impressive, except for the style of it. But the story itself was super boring. That's why I'm just going to sell it. But I will keep the card. You know. And I didn't realize I didn't show the back of the card. Usually the back of the cards have a very generic read-up. His is actually specific to this story. Which is, usually it's just a generic read-up on the back. That could go for the character in any interpretation. But for this one it's specific and I do respect that. His articulation is fine. But his detail and paint are pretty damn good. And he holds his accessory incredibly well. I mean, there's not much more I could ask for. 25 bucks, 
I think that's fair, especially since if that comic was on comic shelves, it'd be almost five bucks by itself. That means he's about a $20 figure <laughs> if you resell the comic, which I'm going to do. So, that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And I'll see you all next time. Bye for now. My sweet Nora.